Hey everybody, this is 5.1 Simplifying Roots. Alright, so the, a lot of this should be a review from things that you did in previous years, but we're going to do a quick review of Simplifying Roots, and then we're going to add something new for you. Okay, so first off, let's talk about inverses. So if we're trying to do the opposite of some operation, then we're going to be doing something called inverses or opposites. So the opposite of addition, what's the opposite of addition? Well, that would be subtraction. And if we wanted to find the opposite or the inverse of multiplication would be division. And the opposite of squaring is square rooting. And we're going to be use the, we're using those inverses to solve lots of problems, okay? So square roots kind of look like that, okay? So um, let's do some simple uh, square roots. So these numbers are nice numbers, and the square root of 100 is just 10. You could use a calculator, and it would give you 10. Again, the square root, if you're trying to, like, uh, another way to think of this, I should say, is uh, 100 is 10 squared. And so if we are squaring something that's squared, then that just cancels and we end up getting 10. Okay. Uh, here's an example here. What would be the square root of 4? Well, that's just 2. Why? Because 2 squared is 4, and when we square root, that would just give us 2. Okay, so the square root of 9, that's just 3. And the square root of 25, well, that's just 5. Okay, so that shouldn't be too bad. If you needed a calculator, you're welcome to use that. Okay, so all of these numbers that we just talked about are rational numbers. A, number, uh, a rational number is a number that can be written as a ratio of two integers. So it can be written as a fraction where the numerator and denominator are just integers. So an integer would be like 2 or 3. So here's an example of a rational number, 2 thirds. Or we could do negative 1 half. Or 5 is a, is a, int, uh, sorry, a, a rational number. It can be written as a fraction. We could do 3 over 1. Okay. So we could also have decimals like 0 0.11111 forever, okay? Any decimal can be written as a fraction if it either ends, so like 0 0.5, that's a decimal that ends, and that's just one half, or a decimal that never ends but has a pattern. We know what's going to happen next. This would be one and one and one, and it would just keep going. We know what's going to happen, okay? So those are all um, rational equations. Again, ra rational, the first part is ratio. Again, a ratio is something that is a fraction, okay? All right, now let's look at E, the square root of 13. So that is not a nice number. If we put in a calculator, uh, and you might want to use one of those to do some of your homework today, here we would end up getting um, 3.6055512.75 dot dot dot. Okay, and that those decimals, those numbers keep going forever. So look at this example. This decimal never ends. Does it have a pattern? Can you tell what's going to happen after the 5? Okay, no. There's no pattern going on. Okay, so this is an irrational number. It cannot be written as a fraction. So um, an integer, again, when you see it visually, it's just a number that has a decimal that never ends and has no pattern. Uh, th probably the better way to say this, it's a number that cannot be expressed or written as a ratio of integers, okay? So there's some examples like the square root of 2 or pi, square root of 20, okay? So while the square root of 13 
can't be simplified. Many in, uh, irrational numbers can be simplified, at least in part. Okay, so let's go and, and review this part. So you should have done this previous years. Okay, but if not, we'll go over it. So how do we simplify a radical? So the first thing is, is we want to find all the prime numbers. And we do that by doing a factor tree. Okay, so let's look at A. Factor tree, what could go into 63? Well, I know that 3 goes into 63 uh, 21 times. Okay, and then we can continue this. 21, 3 can go into 21 7 times. So you can easily just use a calculator and start dividing it by a prime number. Again, a prime number, maybe we should write this down, prime number is a number that has only two factors, one and itself. Okay, so 2 is an example, 3 is an example, 5 is an example. The only thing that goes into 2 is 1 and 2. The only thing that goes into 3 is 1 and 3. 1 is not prime because it only has one factor. Okay, 1. So we wouldn't use 1. Okay, so anyway, so we've got these prime numbers. We've got 3, 3, and 7. We don't want to use the 21 because that is the 3 and 7 over here, okay? All right, so that's our first, our first step is to write down the, the, the prime factorization, all the prime numbers that can make 63, okay? So the next thing that we want to do is we want to identify pairs of the same number. So we have a pair of 3s. We don't have a pair of sevens, so I like to just put a line underneath it so that I know that it's not one of our pairs, okay? So then we just need to figure out where do these numbers go in our answer. So the threes, if you have any pairs, that's gonna come out in the front, and you're just gonna take one of them. Why? Because what we're really doing is we're doing the square root of three times three, well, that is just the square root of 9, which is just 3. So that's why we have just one 3 out in the front. And then the 7 isn't in a group. That's just the square root of 7. And that's our answer. Okay? So let's try a couple more. All right. So I think we talked about all of those steps except for the very last part is we multiply everything outside of the root and everything inside the root. So maybe we'll find an example here where we have to do that, okay? So factor, factor tree, again, I would start with twos. That's your first prime. Do it as many times as you can. This will help you keep it more organized if you do that. So 132, divide it by two, just use your calculator, would get 66. And then let's try again. 66 divided by 2, and we'd get 33. We could try it again, but it gives you, we can't divide 33 by 2, so maybe we could try 3. So 33 divide 3 would give us 11. Okay, and these are all prime numbers. Again, we're not going to use the 66 or the 33, and we want to find pairs. So here is a pair of 2s. So again, pairs come out, so square root of what's not in a group. So we still have a 3 and an 11 that aren't in a group. So 3 and 11, okay? And then the last step was to multiply everything that's outside and everything that's inside. So we've already got the 2, that can't be simplified, but the 3 times 11 gives us 33, okay? All right, let's try another one. Feel free to pause and give this a try. So if you notice here, there's a three that's already out in front, okay? And we're gonna multiply that by everything else that we take out of the root, okay? So here we'd have what, two and 250, two and 125, 
5, so 125 divided by 5 would give us 25. And then we could do 5 again. Okay. Circle pairs. And again, we're not using like the branches. It's only the prime numbers. So here's a pair of fives, and then we have a five that's not in a group. So again, all the things we circle, we're just taking out a two, and we're taking out a five. So we have a three already from here, and then we've got a two from here, and then a five from this group, and then um, a five that's still in the root. Okay, multiply everything together would get 30 square roots of 5. Okay, all right, last example, factor tree. Um, again, you can start with, you could start with any prime number. If there's something that pops out in your, in your mind, like, oh, I know that 5 can go into that because it ends with a 5. So we could start with 5. I think we could also use 3 but that's not as easy to see, okay? So if we do five, 405 divided by five, we get 81, and then we could try a different prime. Five doesn't go into 81, but I know that three can go into it. So three and 27, and then we could do three and nine, three and three. Circle groups, so we have two pairs of threes. So we'd have three and three out in the front, and the five would stay inside. Again, we don't use the 81, the 27, or the 9, because that's not prime. Okay, so we'd get nine square roots of five. All right, hopefully that's making sense. Again, feel free to pause any time in these videos. Okay, all right, now let's look at this example. So I know what the square root of 4 is. That's just 2. But what happens when you have a negative inside of a square root? Okay? So um, try that on your calculator. We'll type in square root negative 4. And mine says error. So most calculators will tell you error, or it might say non-real, okay? So oftentimes your calculator isn't smart enough for some of the types of math that we're doing, okay? So the square root of a negative seems like it can't work, all right? They're, they're like when we square root something, like the square root of four, that's two, why? Because two and two gives us four, and we have a group that we could take out, right? But what are the factors that could multiply to negative four? And they have to be the same number, right? Like when we do the square root of nine, it's three and three. But there's no two numbers that can multiply to four, or negative four, and have them be the exact same two numbers, okay? All right, so yeah, it seems like it's impossible, to take the square root of an, a negative number. This type of number is called an imaginary number, and they are just as important as every other number. Okay, there's many applications in imaginary numbers in science and engineer. We use this a lot when we do anything with electricity. Um, any calculations with electricity is like your phone or cars or um, your Chromebooks. All of these things have to do with imaginary numbers, okay? So the name imaginary numbers is because a mathematician was doing this type of math and another mathematician thought this was ridiculous and there was no point of doing this and it's just fake math, like imaginary, okay? And the name kind of stuck and that's what we have today. Uh, as we know that it's important just as any other type of number. And so like here's a little note kind of talks about mathematicians thought that negative numbers were ridiculous. Like when would you ever need a negative number? Um, you can't have negative five sheep, right? But you can probably think of lots of examples where we would use negative numbers like 
debt would be an example, okay? Um, all right, so imaginary is a number that we get when we square root a negative. So here's more like the definition, is if you have the square root of a negative one, its definition is an i, and we will call that an imaginary, okay? So if we go and do an example really quick, the square root of negative 25, well, I know that the square root of 25 um, is 5, and the square root of a negative 1 is i. So that's kind of our definition, so our answer would be 5i. Okay, so we can kind of separate these two uh, roots and if that makes any, if that helps or makes sense, okay? So here we've got another example. Again, if we have a negative inside, we could have it be positive as long as you put an i out in front. Okay, that's equivalent, that's the same. So then we'd end up getting 9i. Okay, or this would be um, 11i. All right, so let's kind of combine that with simplifying roots. Okay, so just remember that if you have a negative inside, that will give us an imaginary number. We'll call it i. They do i, I think, also because um, how do we how do we differentiate the different type the different types of numbers, right? So labeling it with an i will keep it so people can tell if it's an imaginary or not. Okay, so here we've got a negative. Let's put it out an i in the front, and then we will need to simplify that root. So we'd have 2 and 40, 2 and 20, 2 and 10, and 2 and 5. Circle groups, we have two pairs of 2s, so we'll have 2 times 2, i, so don't forget that we took that out. And then we'd have the square root of what's not in a group is the 5. So 4i square roots of 5 would be our answer. Okay, um, I don't know that we need to go over all of these. Um, I think it would probably be good to go over e. Okay, so again, this would give us an imaginary. We could just make it be positive. And then we'll do the factor tree. So 2 and 12, 2 and 6, sorry, my twos don't look great, two and three, and now we have all of our primes, we'll circle like pairs, two and three over here, they don't have a pair, so they have to stay inside. So here we go, what's in, in front of this square root? We already have a three, we have a two, and we have an i. That was a little messy. Let me try that one more time. Okay, so this would give us 6i in front. And then what's not in a group would be this 2 and 3. So 2 times 3, so we'd get the square root of 6. Okay, so hopefully that's okay. If you have any other questions, I have these other examples on <clears throat> the filled in notes. Okay? And then we just kind of finished up talking about complex numbers and the complex number system. So this, the right side is all the things that you learned in middle school. You learned about natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, we add the negatives. Rational numbers, we talked about that today, it can be written as a fraction. Irrational numbers are things like the square root of two and pi. Okay, and those are all the real numbers. And then we talked about imaginary numbers today. So like 2i or negative 7i, those are imaginary numbers. We could do the square root of negative 1 because that is an i. That's the definition, right? And then we have complex numbers. So complex numbers are a, a combination of real and imaginary. It's like a combination of those. So a combination... Num uh, uh, sorry, a complex number is a number with a real part and a, sorry, imaginary part. 
So we can write those as a complex number like 1 minus 2i. So the, this part is a real part, and this is the part that's imaginary. Okay? So to kind of bring this full circle from what you learned in the past, this is the, the complex number system. All right? Well, let me know if you have any questions. I hope this was okay for you, and we'll see you later.